thank God for bringing us together on this very special day. And want to welcome you to the house of God. However, there are other others that we also want to introduce. So that when we go before the Lord in prayer, we will stand with those people. Amen. Amen. We have in the house overseer set all the way from Gettysburg District. Overseer in Sierra from Frankfurt District. Overseer Otunyako, Detroit. Overseer Ganza, Cleveland. Pastor Mike Porofia, the wife, and the house. Columbus. Myself, I'm here. Hello. I'm sorry, overseer from Romeo Brookhouse. Hallelujah. We also have all the way from Dallas. Pastor Enki in the house. We have a national deacon also in the house. He came on his wife. And all through the goal of Zen. In the chair is our own dear father, Apostle Samson of Oriado. We also have one of our executive members in the house, Elder Samuel Alfonso. Hallelujah. Amen. If there are any others, we'll introduce, uh, introduce them later. Why don't we be on our feet and sing the hymn, I'm pressing on the upward way. I'm pressing on.
because the family who have been here with us for the past five years. The Lord brought them here as a gift to the church. And at the last council meeting that was held in Ghana, it pleased the Lord and the leadership of the church to transfer them from here to Atlanta. And today we are here gathered also to say fairly well to our pastor and their family. And to show our love and to show our appreciation. We want to believe that during the five years that they ministered among us, they were used by God as a channel of blessing unto many. Amen. Amen. And even as we bless the Lord for this precious gift and everything that by the grace of God we were able to do, we also want to honor the man of God and the family for availing themselves that through them we have been touched by the gracious Lord. Amen. 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 Some few things to observe as we all want to make this day a memorable day and a day that the Lord will be pleased with us for when we gathered in his presence we behaved in an orderly manner. Amen. Amen. I want to believe that you can see we still have some empty seats at the back of the uh, ministers, still on the platform. So if you are an elder, you can try and let us make sure that every single seat is occupied. Because I believe we have a lot of people coming in so that they would have a place to sit. So pick up your Bible and come and sit here. Amen. We have other officers who are coming because they are coming late. They should find a place somewhere. No seat is going to be reserved for anybody. And so even as they move to the platform, we want to encourage you also to move forward and occupy every single seat. Let us sit from this place, right from the first row, going back. So that those who for some reasons are coming in late would have a place at the back to sit. So even as I am speaking to you, please move forward, move forward. Please move forward. Super, come forward. Come and show yourself to the Lord. Oh, come forward. I have explained why we are here. And if you have a copy of the brochure, you would realize that the program is divided into two sections. We have part one and part two. And part one is there for the usual Sunday service program. That is the most reason why we are here. We are here to worship God. And I want to ask that we all go through part one as we usually do without any interruption, any um, unnecessary element, any foreign element coming into it. When we get to part two, the attention will be shifted to our pastor and the family. And then at that point, we'll be given the chance to show your love or do whatever uh, it's required of you. Please we want to humbly ask that if we are singing and you want to dance, you go, you take one lap, two laps, and you go and sit down. Don't come and hijack the dancing floor. Because we are many. There may be somebody who would want to come and also dance. But if we come and hijack the dancing floor, it's not proper. Again, don't go and congregate right 
here where our pastor and the family are sitting. And you are dancing to the Lord. You are not dancing to them. So just take a lap, one, two, you go and sit down. If you are inspired to dance, you just go ahead and dance. Don't force the hands of somebody who is not ready to dance <laughs> to join you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So don't go and pull them that they should join you. We have people here in the house who will do that. We have ministers here and ministers' wives. We are here. When the comes, they will do it. Amen. Amen. They came here well dressed. Don't use your handkerchief, don't use anything to try to clean their face, wipe, uh, whatever you may consider to be. Uh, and then don't spray anything on them. Different people prefer wearing different type of corons and all that. So keep what belongs to you to yourself. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. And let all that prevail in the house of God. Today, I would want to add my voice to introduce to you a man who has been designated by the leadership of the church to come and officiate this program. Amen. Amen. I am here working from behind the scenes. And the main man is our pastor, Joseph M.G. Dallas, Texas, and he is here uh, by the authority of the leadership of the church. Pastor, you are welcome. Amen. How sweet the name oh, of Jesus. Now, 
insania a fida a a di kind a me ba a asiano me nemo at nine a brenu in a name de amobrasia a green in a nini soupi ne soche a a ba me so you da four bo a or bo me and umu me som a ratty patroya duno twenty. Na mensu niya e ya infasomu bibia raso. Se e bia mimi ka men chiramo. Na men chira chiramo. Gwaso ni e fimu. Twenty one. Na midi o nyanku pomfem agen sakra. Ene e radi yesu kristo mu jidi e mo. A dance ye me chire yudafo ne he lafo. Na afeshe. Homona shame inti me record Jerusalem na minimu ni ya ebeto me ewoho. Jisa homo kongkono di me adansi ya inkro eni na mu kase ochi ana amani ya chemi na me fa e yi me ni bribi na so me mu me kra ahu aje. Me ma me hon. Na me di e nije me wye me nante o ne o som a mi nya e radi Yesu Christo e chen se mi ni o nyanko pon dom a sempano e hon a tansi e no. 25. Na a fe she mi nim se mo a me nam mu mo me kan a hini e no e hon a semono e yina rui mu meni mpio. Inti ene midi a dansi ya se. Me mu e fi mu yina e moja e hon. Twenty seven. E fi se me su bi bi araso. Se e bi ya me rinka o nyanku po tri mu e jina e yina me nchira mo. Enti mwisha mwuhu eni inwe nkuwa ni nina a mwuhu nkuwa te mwuhu esisi wansu a shefu wano se mwunye o nyanku pa wano asafu a wate na nkasa ni moja enya wano Amen Praise the Lord Hallelujah I'm reading from the New Living Translation, Acts chapter 20, verses 17 to 28. It says, But when we landed at Miletus, he sent a message to the elders of the church at Ephesus, asking them to come and meet him. When they arrived, he declared, You don't know that from the day I set foot in the province of Asia until now, I've done the Lord's work humbly, and with many tears. I've endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. I have had one message for Jews and Greeks alike, the necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God, and of having faith in our Lord Jesus. 22, and now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to him unless I use it for the finishing, for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. 25. And now I know that none of you to whom I have preached the kingdom would ever see me again. I declare today that I have been faithful. If anyone suffers eternal death, it is not my fault. For I didn't shrink from declaring all that God wants me to know. 28. So guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, purchased with his blood, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as elders. Amen. Amen.
We want to go before the Lord in worship. We want you to prepare your hearts and us together, we join our hearts together. We want to bless the name of the Lord for upholding our Baba, for keeping him here. Uh, for five years, I know it's not been easy. It's not all ministers are having that easy. But the Lord has been faithful. He has been a shepherd over you for five years. So if not for anything, you have a worship to give unto the Lord for his sake. Let's be upstanding. Let's be upstanding. Masambarama. Vabaraba shakaka. Masambarama sukatarama. Uba sataraba shababa baba sambu 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 sambu
exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let me be gloated by my enemies. Lord, my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me out of the realms of the dead, and you spread me from the dead of the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only for a moment. For his favor lasts a lifetime. For his favor lasts a lifetime. Father, we bless you. Father, we lift your name up. Father, we say you are great. And everything written about you is great. The next session is in your hands. Do what makes you God. So that every glory will be given to you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Things is that even as they live, 
we also send them off all our mistakes. Hallelujah. Amen. And embracing new friends. This morning the Lord has laid upon my heart a simple message I have entitled Be a Vessel of Honor. Amen. Be a Vessel of Honor. We'll quickly take our Bible and go to 2 Timothy 20 to 21. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Hallelujah. Sanctified and meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. Be a vessel of honor. As a matter of fact, the portion of scripture that we, we read, God was using through the instrumentality of our support writing to Timothy. The imagery of the body of Christ to the depict within Christendom and in the family of God that are finished, praise God. Some are of great quality and others of less quality. Some to honor and some to dishonor. Indicating that in the body of Christ, some are like God. By virtue of their dedication, services, by way of allowing themselves to be used by God, they become gold. Today, as we see, Pastor Hoff, I pray that every member in this church shall be a gold. Amen. Oh, you are not here this morning. Amen. We shall be golden vessels. Amen. If not gold, silver. Amen. But for the wood and hay, that's why we don't want it here. Looking at this beautiful edifice, people within this edifice qualify to discharge their duties with distinction as golden vessels. Amen. I challenge you, if for the past five years you were a vessel of dishonor, today I graduate you from dishonoring vessel to an honoring vessel. Amen. Olivia, here, a short big amen to that. So the service is who is man that 
you have made him a little lower than angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. That was a double honor. So from our very foundation, we were created honorable beings. But when Satan came in, man was before. Praise God. The intent and the purpose for him, God designed man, became a failure. But God has a second plan. I said, God has a second plan. In the wisdom of God, because man is the replica of God, the total representation of God, who he is in character, in manifestation, God had to design a plan so that man shall be restored. So when Jesus came, he took our shame, transformed us, created us it for good works. So in that transformation process, the believer is taken from one end of the ball game, goes through the processes of becoming a vessel of honor, and by virtue of that, he is expected to discard his duty as a vessel of honor. This morning, may the Lord bless us. So the devil being jealous of us came in, so we were deformed. But Jesus came to transform us into a better place. Now we are heading towards heaven. Praise God. Now we are in charge of the earth. Now we have put in place to rule, to govern, to dominate. Oh, praise God. So I came to challenge you, child of God, you must be a vessel of honor. Because that is what you were designed to be. But something came into the picture. But thanks be unto God for his servant Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'll try to de de define a vessel of honor in the parameters of scripture. By biblical paradigm, a vessel of honor is an exclusive associate of God. The moment you go through salvation, as a child of God, you become partner with God. Oh, praise God. <laughs> One whom God has honored by no reason. This morning, God has greatly honored you. Amen. Because there are so many people in the world that he chose you Amen. out of the world. That is a great service. Amen. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He has honored us by knowing us Calling us the very people that he predestined, he called. Praise God. So, after knowing us, he called us. Not only that, he has empowered us with resources, with greetings, with potentials. I see great potentials in this church. But if we shall understand who we were designed for in a year's time like this, this auditorium will be more than public. Oh, please come on. So, men are the repository of treasures because we are acting vessels, but not mere vessels. We are the treasures, we are the custodians of the great things of God. So, within man, there is a hidden treasure. As you sit here, there is something in the inside of you. I said there is something in the inside of you. It is up to you to discover, to uncover, and to release that purpose. And it will blow your mind what God can do to you. I said this morning, I challenge you to be a vessel of honor. Praise God. These people that have been endowed, deposited with the mysteries of God. With the wisdom of God. By virtue of their positive intimacy with God, they live their life fittingly. Somebody shout, fittingly. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. To their calling. And they discharge or harness their God given endowment, potential, to the blessing in sending humanity. This is you. Amen. You have been honored. You have been called. Not only have you been called, but God has placed something.
faith in you. And he expects you and I to use it fittingly, appropriately, unstoppably, until we accomplish our mission. That is all of my duty. This morning, be a vessel of honor. Open his call. To become a vessel of honor, you must belong to a great house. Oh, there are so many houses, but there is one house the family of God, the body of Christ. This house is better than any house, it is even better than the White House. Because the architect of this house is God. Oh, praise God. We have been sanctified by the blood of Jesus. We have been washed. And as a matter of fact, we are royals. We are a holy nation. Oh, praise God. As a matter of fact, as a true believer, you must know who you are, who you are, and what you stand for. Know who you are, who you are, and what you stand for. As I see you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the signature of God. As a matter of fact, you are a vessel of honor with all the potentials to be able to turn Cincinnati outside right. I come to challenge you in the next four to five years, this church must quadruple. But until we come to comprehend the fact that we are not mere vessels, but vessels of honor, this can be. Indeed, if you want to experience an honorable church, all the furnishings within the church must be honorable. Amen. Then there shall be a great family of God. Amen. In the kingdom of God, we have the king of kings. So in this kingdom, as royals, we are kings. And God is our king. So it is only in this kingdom whereby people within the kingdom are not considered subjects, but they are kings. So when we say he is the king of kings, indicating that you, in the image of God, you are a king. And above all, we have a king. So we are all royals. So I said this morning, we are royals. Tell somebody you are a royal. Because you have flowing within your DNA. The royal blood. That kind of blood is able to penetrate cultural backgrounds. It is sometimes amazing the way we meet as church. And under the unction of the Holy Spirit, we comport ourselves and do things as God expects us. Yet, we are from different backgrounds. This is the family of royals. <laughs> and you are a royal. I am a royal. And gradually, Jesus is preparing us. of God is a vessel, but not everybody in the house of God is a vessel of honor. Being a vessel is one thing, and being a vessel of honor is another. So within Christendom, there are vessels, but not all of them are vessels. This morning, I challenge you, what kind of a vessel Begin to sit down. I told you when pastors are being fed well, it is the time to sit back, calculate, analyze the blessings that God used the man of God to do for us. In our own Christian life, it is incumbent upon us to make a self examination if we are in the faith. There is a need for us to throw certain things away and embrace new things. This one, you are a vessel of honor. Praise God. There are two types of vessels, as you read honorable vessels and dishonorable vessel. When we talk about vessel being dishonorable, they are the very people in the house of God. They just add up to membership of the church, but not in value. Indicating that they are in church just to add up to numbers. Amen. But they don't contribute meaningfully, authentically, positively, passionately, purposefully. Oh, 
kingdom principle. Powers the kingdom business. They are there just to gather. The power should have said 500. 500 and they put it the back. And they put it back. And they put it back. So some are just mere additions, but they are not there as people that are valuable. By contributing positively to the cause of the church. This morning, I challenge you. If you have been sitting on the face far too long, rise up. Oh, praise God. That is not your place. They add up to numbers. Some people are easily offended and are easily provoked. The least provocation of our story has shown them all. We will have any crystal. Praise God. Source 
and owner of creation and his lordship over creation. The measure by which our spirit, soul, and body receive the above factors of God, his sovereignty, his lordship, the owner of creation, makes inroads into our lives. It becomes an issue of the bigger the reception of God. Oh, praise God. The bigger God receives you. Are you here? I said what? The bigger the reception of God, the bigger God's reception of you. It, it is so sad. Jesus came unto his own, but his own did not receive. But to them that receive, they gave them the power. They can't receive. Familiarity makes consent. This, we know him. Joseph, son. <laughs> you tell us you are Lord. But there are certain things that are mysteries. And in Christianity, certain things are grasped by faith. The moment you begin to comprehend and understand God, He ceases to be God. He is unsearchable. You begin here, and today, tomorrow, you go to another dimension of Him. Praise God. Sometimes He is a God. As much of what he repays, he re he re and his justice is sometimes you can't stand. But sometimes, when you expect God to ask, he shows mercy. What is he So, in working with God, we must learn to yield ourselves and follow the leadings of the Spirit. Because it is not as I will, but as He wills. So, the will of God must precede our personal will. Oh, are you here this morning? I said, be a vessel of honor. Yeah. To become a vessel of honor, you need to be receptive. Praise God. Yeah. There is one pervasive spiritual principle which influences divine and human relation. And it is that the more you draw closer to God, the more God-like you become. And the more God-like you become, the greater are the chances that you will positively impact people's lives. As a matter of fact, in the call of Moses, Exodus chapter 3, he became so curious. He saw there was something there, but the wood was not being consumed. So he said, let me get attracted to it. And the moment he got closer to it, there was a voice from the fire. As a matter of fact, Moses' ministry was one of distinction because he was called out of fire. On the day of Pentecost, the official inauguration of the church, when the fire fall, we assume that same rule. So what Moses was able to do, you can do better. Oh, I said you can do better. Because he was called out of fire. And as a matter of God had to pension him. Either than that, the people might have assumed he was God. It was intentional pension. That is why he said in this retirement, even his body, nobody will find it. Either than that, they will have gone and bow to it. Make it a form of God. Praise God. Amen. So after Moses got attracted to the fire, there was a call. And in that call, he was mandated to do something. Praise God. That was the first test of reception. He took off his sandals, indicating that all impurities, unwanted things, can be in the presence of God. Praise God. I am sending you. In Ezra 7, verse 1, he said, I have made you God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Unto Pharaoh. Hallelujah. Somebody said, What? <laughs> Somebody who was running from Egypt after an encounter with the Alpha and the Omega in the form of fire, he was transformed.
the mountain top. Mm. 40 days, 40 nights. And when he was coming, the people said, We are afraid. Mm. There is too much of God in you. Mm. Oh, the Bible says, The righteous are shy. Oh, the righteous are shy. More and more. I pray by the message of God. May you shine. Oh, I said, may you shine. May you be the shining star of Cincinnati. However, you need to be receptive. The reason why the church is experiencing revolving door syndrome. Whereby by the half year, so many people have come in, but they exit. Jesus was born in a manger because they have no room for him. We close from church. We want to build religions by the close of service. I was you have a to say. Somebody came to church next to you from a different background. We don't open up to them. Yet we want the peace to be filled. Tell somebody, make room. Listen. Within every man, there is the seed of good and evil. And the very one that you give attention to is supersedia. That's right. So, church, let us be accommodated. Elijah had to go outside the boundaries of Israel and Judah to the house of a widow from Sarah. Because the whole city thought he was a troublemaker. Yet he was a carrier of the church. Mm. Ministers are gifted unto the church. Amen. For us to experience the giftings and the blessings they carry, we must make room for them. Somebody shall be in the church. be with your pastor that you will not receive him. Mm. I vet you of a heart to you. Sometimes it's so sad. Ministry will not be easy. Don't say this to prime minister last night. Before. By three o'clock, you are awake. The betting is too much. You can't sleep. And they are carriers of God's blessing. And sometimes they don't receive them. So they come and they go. Today, a new pastor is coming. Receive him. And it will bless you. Praise God. The Bible says, with that controversy, Hebrews 7 7. Are you here this morning? Yes. It is good to be receptive, but that is not enough. The vessel must be open. Tell somebody, open up now. <laughs> we are living in a world whereby everything is visible. You can't hide anymore. Even as I'm here, maybe I'm on live stream. Make <laughs> sure there is no hiding place. They will WhatsApp you, they will Snapchat you, they will Facebook you, and they will email you. So <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. There is one thing being receptive and another being open. Being open is a step further than being receptive. To be open is to allow the other person in relationship with you to see and to know certain things. In the chamber of your heart. You are here with your wife, yet she doesn't know your mother comes. Hey. We are in a relationship, but <laughs> no open no policy. But for this year, there are values. You can't go there. Who told you? Everything must be visible. There is nothing hidden that shall not be. So you better open your God as a God of principle abide by the indispensable principle of if you open up to me then I shall open up to you. Even as I'm speaking some people may even shut their hands. Praise God. 
To be open to God is to worship Him with your spirit and mind and less of your body. Because the carnal mind will never please God. So when you're open with, to Him, your mind and your spirit always in His presence. Praise God. That is letting the spirit and mind take the center stage of one's relationship with God. With the body serving as a stooge. The moment you spread and your mind take the center stage of your relationship with God, then you have opened up unto Him. I open up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To receive 
receive from God will go before him empty. The Lord will come and we are full. Because it is only the sick that is in need of a physician. So as we see Pastor Goff, I want to challenge all of us. Not only should you be receptive, you must be open. Not only open, but be what? Our opening must not be very failure. Indicating that you can get to the door of the heart, but you can't get to the heart. That is serious. There is first the holiness that leads to the bottom of one's heart. This type of holiness has a starting point and an ending point. The starting point is our openness to God. The ending point is the bottom of our heart, which by biblical balance is the belly. Here, the principle of flowing is invoked. Unless something flow, in, nothing can flow out. I said, unless something flow in, nothing can flow out. So I was supposed that what I receive of the Lord, the same. You must be at the verge of receiving, allowing the oil to flow. And then you must be fully prepared to discharge. Because what you can't have in life, that is why Peter and the other apostles said, look at us, what we have. Praise God. The thing was not upon them alone, it was within them. So every time they see a sick person, uh, the Holy Ghost begins to ignite that thing. I pray in the name of Jesus. I said, I pray in the name of Jesus. If for some reason something has become an impediment, I start under the unction of the Holy Ghost. And today, may that be a way. In a year's time like this, will you consider and give back to friends? Yeah. You don't believe it, for we brought all things up. Oh, praise God. Are you here this morning? Since you the church, you are a beautiful church. You have a beautiful sanctuary. But I pray that we shall be holy. We shall be empty. When we come, by the time we live here, we are soaked in the unction and in the anointing to function. Are you here? Let me run through it. The vessel must be packed. Somebody said, packed. That's what the Bible says. The man therefore packed himself from this. Second Timothy 2 21. Packed himself. Spiritual packing is a periodic evaluation of oneself in order to read every hidden or unknown defilement in the body, soul, and spirit. As believers, there is always the need for us to make self evaluation. The Bible says, examine yourself. The moment you refuse to do that, you embrace a lot of spiritual talks again. And there will come a time you will scream, but that will happen. You will bind, but they shall be loose. You lose when they are bound. Because you have come to that stage. Whereby you don't command the presence of God. Because without holiness, it is impossible for us to please God. Job, arguably one of the most profound Bible characters, was an ardent practitioner of biblical pagan. Indeed, he extended this practice to cover his entire family. When we read Job 1 4 to 5. And the sons went and feast in their houses every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about. Job sent and sanctified them. You see? Sanctified them. And rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. No wonder whatever he lost, he had a double thing. Because of continual pagan. Biblically, pagan calls for constant purity of heart and soul and mind. The prepared vessel that meets the standard for
for God to use is a sanctified heart, consecrated heart, dedicated heart, a heart that is spared, a heart that is focused on God. Holiness is not one thing. It is an amalgam of certain events. It must precede purification, sanctification, consecration, oh hallelujah, and at the end of all, you are Christ the center. He tell you truth is great. But I came to tell there is one truth. Amen. <laughs> and this is the word of God. You can't change it. It's been dead from ages. And it's still alive. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. We need to prepare ourselves. That is not enough. We need to be pliable. To be pliable is to be flexible or yielding easily to the other. A pliable vessel is one that easily yields to its vessel, the Lord. Pliability must the highest point in the life of a vessel that has been handed into the hands of the Almighty God. Are you flexible? Some of us are too rigid. Don't go there. Pastor, I just came from there. <laughs> Don't sit down. Let me ask them. The story is told of a boy who went to school. The teacher said, sit down. By compulsion, say, okay, I'll sit, but I'm standing in my heart. <laughs> Praise God. To become pliable, certain things must take precedence in one's life. You must die to yourself. Praise God. You must understand that everything you have, what you are able to acquire, what you cherish in life, belongs to you. So this young man, it was his master's degree, threw it away. Say, I'm coming from ministry. You know the paycheck he received? That is a true call. Apostle Paul was a great doctor of the law. But after that personal encounter, he said, I can't offer this. But for Christ, I able to see that. Some of us, when you are staying tight, Jesus is the Lord of your life when you are sick. He's the Lord of your life when you are, uh, you are driving. But when it comes to tempting, he's not the Lord of your money. <laughs> Everything yes, not for money, no. May the Lord have mercy. I say, may the Lord have mercy. The fact of the matter is one can be receptive, open, whole, or third. But if not climax with pliability, all these indices are rendered irrelevant. What is the essence of the car if you can drive it? Beautiful car, I bought a car, but you can't use it. What is the essence? So, child of God, there is something in you. Avail yourself to the senses of God and it will amaze you. We are unique in that we belong to a great house. And because we belong to a great house, we are uniquely blessed to do great exploits. Oh, praise God to the benefits of our association. And being part of this great house. To him, that much is given. Much I always said, our forefathers, they started this church on the Kokoti. You are here on the carpet ground. Come to church and pray. You come like a. You are late. And then <laughs> Go to some places. Even in the bush. Listen, there is no hiding place except God. So church, you must make room for God. We do not belong to the also's. We are not in this world to add to numbers. Live therefore in the life of your placement. Endowment, your heritage. Then you will be on your way to becoming a vessel of honor. Praise God. Verses of Anna, I want to conclude. Nelson Mandela. He spent 27 years as a political prisoner. He led among his inmates in prison, fighting for better treatment, better food, equal rights for his people. He earned his bachelor's degree while in prison through a correspondence by a university in London. Whilst behind bars, 
He continued to build his reputation as a political leader. When he's released from prison, he continued negotiations that resulted in praise God. In the, in the democracy he yearned for. He was elected president of South Africa. Received more than 250 awards, including the Nobel Peace Prize. A vessel of honor. His funeral was a global event. He could have decided to lie low, to give in, and to let those 20, 27 years sap his motivation and influence. But he did not. God bless you.
disciples had their own encounter. It is the Lord that sanctifies, that, that makes us, transforms us into his image so we can be able to impact our generation. You can never be a voice in your generation if you can't hear the voice of God. 